Hello, my name is Rachel and I love chain and scale mail. Now I did previously do a tutorial on basic scale mail and I was thinking, so maybe you did your two scale mail triangles and you've connected them together to make a bra top. I thought I would share with you one of the more common and popular chain weaves so you can now make the neck chain. This is going to be a tutorial on how to weave Byzantine chain. And give you some examples here. This is a Byzantine chain right here. This is in 16 gauge quarter inch rings and you can see how it's a little bit more open there. Another option with uh, Byzantine is you can actually just make little segments of the Byzantine and then connect the segments with larger rings to give it a different effect like that right there. And every chainmail weave does have an AR, which is aspect ratio, which tells you how the, the rings need to be sized for that weave to work properly. I personally do not know the aspect ratios, but if you Google it, I'm sure you can find the aspect ratio for Byzantine. I just experiment and find out which rings work best for me. Uh, and I do know that I believe that the ring lord will tell you the aspect ratio for a lot of the weaves as well. So they, they are a really good resource. And I just want to show you like more examples. This is, these are 18 gauge and I believe they're 3 16th rings. You can see how tight of a weave that creates. And that's the same weave as what I was just showing you. So you can see how you can definitely change the look of Byzantine by changing rings. This one I actually did with two different size rings, a quarter inch silver and then a, I'm not even sure what size those are. I think those might be a, again, 3 sixteenths, 18 gauge there in the middle in pink. You can see how that gives it a different look as well. So there's all sorts of ways that you can play with the weave and experiment and get different looks out of it, all with the same weave. So let me, get you flipped around and I'll show you how to do Byzantine and I'm going to show you Byzantine with three different sizes. We're going to do 16 gauge quarter inch, 16 gauge 732 inch, <laughs> and 16 gauge 5 sixteenths. So I will see you in just a second. Okay, so here we have our four pile of rings. They're all 16 gauge. These are 5 sixteenths. These are a quarter inch and these are 732. And I'm gonna make a little section of Byzantine out of each of them so that you can see how changing the size changes the look of your Byzantine. And as you get smaller, like if you were to go to a 3 16th ring, you would actually also need to drop the gauge of the ring. You would need to go to the 18 gauge or else the weave would be too tight. And that's, that's that aspect ratio I'm talking about, which, like I said, I don't actually know what that ratio is, but you can Google and find that. Uh, I just do it through experimentation and seeing what works best for me. But I am going to start us with the largest ring, hoping uh, that way you'll be able to see what I'm doing better. And then we'll make them from the smaller rings after hopefully you, you can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna start with these silver rings. And I'm going to close four of these rings. And remember, when you're opening and closing your rings, always move them back and forth. Never pull them apart. That'll distort your ring. Moving back and forth will give you a nice, clean closure. Next, I'm going to take a silver ring, and I'm going to put those four closed rings on this silver ring. And we're going to close this ring. Then we take another silver ring. And we put that through those four rings as well. And then you can separate them out into a chain where you have three sections of two rings. 
So next what you do, hold it by that top section. And then you want to take those two rings. Well, first let me open, just to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to open two of these red rings to have them ready. And then you want to take those top two rings on your section of three, and you're going to flip those back and then push the ends all the way up to the top of those second rings. And then you want to take your opened ring and you want to th thread it through those two rings that were the top rings that you just flipped over so that you capture them like that and it gives you this little shape like that. Now because these rings are so large they are going to have problems holding the shape. You can see how these fell down and then it turned into that chain again and you lost that shape. Something you can do is add a weight to the the starter right here at the end. Like I was using safety pins with my previous stuff. Let's see if I can find one real quick. So I'm just going to put a safety pin there at the, to mark my end. So here we go. That's what we have so far. And then we're going to take the second red ring and we're going to thread it through those same two rings. And here's what we have now. So then I'm going to go back to the silver rings. And I'm going to put the silver rings through those two red rings. And a second one. Again, make sure that you're in the pattern before you add the new ring. So I've got the pattern pulled back out. Put on that second silver ring. And basically we're trying to build another chain of three like we started with. So we're going to put two more silver rings in here. Put two silver rings through those silver rings we just did. Another one, and then now that we again have a chain of three, two rings each, you again take that top one and do the exact same thing where you flip it back and push it all the way up to the top and open those second rings so that you can get to the two you flipped back. And then, you, and then you just want to put the ring through those. And your second ring. Again, make sure it's in the, the pattern before you add the ring. Inside there to keep it reversed. Now as you can see the 5 16 rings aren't super ideal for this weave because it's just really spaced out and fiddly where it's constantly losing its shape. But something you can do to to make it work is you can add extra rings to that middle part to tighten it up.
So you can have something like that. And you can do the same at the top and the bottom as well, and that'll give you a little bit more structure. So here is the 5 16th section of Byzantine. And next we'll move to the quarter inch. So we're gonna start again by closing four of these black rings. And then we take one black ring and put all four on it. So that we have our little chain of three by two. Three long, two, two rings each section. And then I'm going to open the two green rings to have them ready. And same thing, just take those top rings flip them back, push the ends all the way up so that you can get to them from that second section of rings because you want to thread through those two rings. Same thing with this one. Now we have a little section here and then back to the black rings. We're going to create our chain of three again. And now we have that little chain of three. And you can see how the quarter inch is a little less fiddly. It's holding its shape a little bit better. And again, just take those top two rings, flip them over, and then the bottom of the rings, you wanna to push to the top of those second two rings so you have that little shape there. And you want to go in and grasp them. And here we have a section of Byzantine in the quarter inch. You can see it's a little, holds its shape a little bit better than the, the 5 sixteenths. And of course if you're building a chain you just repeat that process continually. <laughs> and you can mix up the colors to get different looks like I said, you can mix up sizes to get different looks. Okay, so for our final one, I already have four closed rings. And these are the 732. So I'm going to take my open black ring, put on the four closed rings. Add a second ring. So again, you have your chain, three sections of two rings each. And I have 
two green rings already open. So again, we take those ones from the top and we flip them over. And then there you can see, let me take one of our open rings and just put it through those two flipped over rings. Do a second ring. Go back to our black. And again, we're forming a chain of three that are two pieces long. Here we have another chain that's three pieces long again. And just flip over those top rings. Oh, let me grab my next ring. But yeah, just take those two top rings see how you butterfly them back and then push the bottom up into the top of that second ring and put your new ring through those two bottoms and then put in another one And there you go. We have a little section of Byzantine. Like I said, you can just keep going and create a long chain, or you can make a bunch of little sections and then connect the little sections with a different size ring to give it a different look. And just to show you building a chain, So you can see we have another little section of one, two, three, two rings each. And again, you just take that top one, flip it back. Put a ring through those. There we go, and you can see our chain of Byzantine is growing. And that's all you'd have to do, just keep repeating that until you have your chain as long as you like. Or like I said, you can do a couple sections of them and hook them together with a different ring. I actually have a, another section over here of that one, just to show you, even though these are different sizes, but that's something you could do too if you wanted to. Let's see, you could just connect two sections of Byzantine together. And create a chain that way by connecting together a bunch of little individual sections of Byzantine, or just keep building your chain of Byzantine. So I hope these instructions were somewhat clear. You got the idea. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments below. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs down. Give me some constructive criticism in the comments below. And I just want to thank you so much for watching and I hope everyone has a wonderful day.